talk about those billion dollar revenues as well as deals that have poured in this quarter and for a quarter that's usually a little quieter. Gantri, thanks so much for being with us. Let me just go through the numbers, uh, you know, for those that have just sort of tuned in as a bit of a refresher because you've seen phenomenal growth this time. Q4 revenues up 3.2%, 25% EBIT margins, uh, uh, flat Q on Q profits. 99 billion rupees, that's up 7% year on year and 2% Q on Q. Now, what remain some of the key growth drivers this quarter and how do you expect FY23 to be for TCS? That's a, a, a very broad question, but given the kind of growth that you've delivered this time around, and while it was perhaps expected for analysts, there was a part of the market that was thinking that uh, we would start to see the uh, beginnings or the indications of a slowdown, clearly that did not happen. Uh, thank you, Abba. Um, uh, more and more of business is getting embedded into technology. That's the first uh, impression and first uh, foresight. Right? With the result that, look, almost all businesses, whether it is big, small, uh, whether it is airlines or banking or uh, capital markets or retail, they're all investing in technology and that is uh, the key thing to note. Whether they want to grow, they want to optimize, they want to be resilient, they want to secure, they want uh, uh, to participate in ecosystems. In every one of these cases, I think technology is uh, the enabler and they've all seen that in a pandemic situation when people could not attend office, technology actually bailed them out. Right? And I think that's the biggest realization. Uh, second thing I will say is that, um, you know, we have invested in building uh, sk the skills that we need on the digital technologies massively over the last three, four years. And we also formed specific offerings around cloud, agile, automation, intelligence, data analytics, and all of that. So when you put all these things together, then what we find is that our products and services are a lot more relevant to our customers. Right? And that's something that, you know, you see the, you know, the results uh, of the, the Q4 of FI22, extremely pleased with the way that it uh, came out and uh, great to finish it like that and have a very good exit rate for FI23. Absolutely. Uh, talking about some of the big deal wins, uh, Huge momentum, of course, the key positive surprise, the $11.3 billion uh, TCV, uh, you know, which includes two mega deals now. Uh, when will they start adding up? Tell us a little bit more about the contribution from these and, and what they're all about. Yeah. Now, both the mega deals that we concluded, they, will, they have already started to, uh, we, we have started to execute them, right? So, and uh, so the revenue from those deals will start to accrue from Q1 onwards, Q1 of FI23 onwards. Um, overall, you know, even if you exclude those mega deals, then still, you know, we are uh, uh, having about 9.5 billion as the revenue, as the as the order book rather. So, which is a very good number. You know, we have been clocking about eight to nine billion, eight to seven, seven and a half to 8.5 billion dollars as the order book over the last several quarters. So our efforts have always been to move that median number, right, you know, uh, to the right. So I'm glad that we are finishing it at 9.5 and we hope to uh, do justice to the kind of products and services that we have, the momentum that we have, and keep improving our performance uh, in FI23. Uh, you spoke somewhere about a you know, massive reorganization going forward in April. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah. See, traditionally in our uh, uh, business, you know, there are three uh, dimensions to the structure. One is that uh, the geography oriented structure, right? So you've got countries and markets to operate. And you've got verticals like banking, insurance and things like that. Right? So the verticals is other way of looking at it. Then there are service lines, like for example, cloud is a service line. Um, growth and transformation programs is a service line, and things like that. So these are three dimensions we used to have. And uh, we continue to have those dimensions. And then it's a collaboration between the markets team and the verticals teams and the service teams come together around a customer requirement and execute them as projects. And projects typically operate as the PNL 
and uh, and, and deliver the value and uh, they do all the numbers pretty much right so we are here to pretty much watch and then take it and report it to all of you yeah. right yeah. now what we have done is that um, we have added one more dimension to those three which is uh, really you know uh, what we call is the customer journey dimension right so as customers start at the journey uh, with tcs you know they sometimes they start small sometimes they start big uh, after going through a process and what's important for them is the experience that we give them as they uh, come and do uh, projects with us one you never get a second chance to make the first good impression as people say so what we said is that look okay how do we curate that journey with you know so as they come in how do we actually stay close to them and how do we make sure that um, we deliver impeccably to the promises that we make as they come so then you know you are there solidified your relationship with them and then they understand uh, the way of working that tcs has we bring in and set up all the processes tools that are required so that on that platform you could just go and harvest more of that customer spend right in terms of offering all the things that tcs has right so the journey dimension is that look okay you acquire them you incubate them and then you harvest uh, more of uh, the relationship mine it and then become a trusted partner and transform them right uh, so that you know so that's the journey dimension that we have added okay. we have formed um, specific groups and um, included and it's not something you know while this in the it industry it is new uh, but if you really look at a banking or any other industry you know you start with the customers and they acquire a customer and they are a student and then they get into a job and then they become an executive and then they provide wealth management services and so on and so on so so that kind of a thing is what we have attempted and i think it's paying um, early results already so given the context then and given that some of these major deals will continue to now contribute uh, you know in the coming quarters do you expect to maintain uh, you know this kind of uh, growth trajectory steady uh, do you see any headwinds uh, at all which you know even if uh, you know they may not be you know sort of drastic but could be macro headwinds currency for instance uh, you know given what's happening geopolitically uh, anything else that you're just mindful of at this stage see all the macro level indicators and the economic uh, indicators that are being pointed out is something that for us to note and we have to keep track of those uh, indicators how they pan out whether it is the inflationary trend that you see or the war situation that uh, how it uh, is going to uh, pan out or uh, the pandemic you know people say it's not over and it's uh, you know for example some countries are already witnessing something but we have to keep all of that in um, in uh, you know uh, in the radar and then see uh, but then you know at the same time there is technology requirement and uh, even the toughest of situations people now believe that business has to go on and uh, technology is the one which is going to help them to execute it so in that context that you know you look at our customer base where is it that they are going what is it that they want us to do keep very uh, stay very close to them and then start executing some of the offerings that we have um so in that context while macro indicators are there the demand environment that we see is very positive and uh, we see we have signed as you uh, rightly pointed out 11.3 billion dollars worth of uh, deals and we see a good pipeline of deals in which we are working on um so you know we just have to stay focused on what we need to do how we need to execute it at the same time stay agile to see what's happening around us right um um so the overall i uh, while i am a bit uh, cautious about some of the indicators that are coming to us but what we see with our clients and prospect base that we have there is a good momentum and we want to capture that momentum and continue to perform well and with i do want to ask you on on attrition and so forth but but before i do uh, you know when you're talking about growth is it broad based in terms of verticals and geographies or or are you seeing strength uh, more specifically in certain pockets no it's a broad based growth um, across markets as well as verticals north america you know contributed to nearly 50% of the 11.3 billion dollar deal um, but then you know we have one deals in europe 
Australia, um, in emerging markets, I mean, all over. I think it's very broad based. Likewise, verticals also. It's quite uh, uh, encouraging to see that. Okay. Okay. Talk about attrition because that's really what uh, everyone observes and is worried about. Net additions were high, of course, but attrition rose to seventeen point four percent. Firstly, do you see yourself continuing with the kind of hiring momentum uh, that you've seen so far through FY twenty three? In fact, it's been very, very solid. Uh, secondly, uh, what's leading to the high rate of attrition, and do you also see that moderating or continuing to be uh, a pain point? I mean, I think incremental addition. Uh, attrition has come down, but what do you see as the trend going forward? And we see the attrition getting to some kind of a stable situation in about six to eight months' time. That's what uh, we hope for. That's the indication. If I see the curve and how it pans out, uh, there is a belief that you know, in about six to eight months' time, that uh, supply side should uh, remain stable and demand side also should should be stable. The thing to note is that. You know, we called out that this is a big investment cycle that's coming, and we started to upskill and uh, hire a lot of people during the pandemic as well, right? Um, and started to train all of those people, and then so that we have the skills that we need to execute the demand that we foresaw. Um, but then, you know, uh, the demand in environment really was really great, and then which meant that look, our uh, the industry as well as some of the competitors needed those trained skills. With the result that, look, naturally, TCS has those skills, so people uh, came and, uh, uh, and started to hire people from TCS as well. But the key thing to note is that we are an employer of choice, and uh, we, are, we continue to able to, uh, attract talent, both laterally as well as uh, um, you know, from a fresher's perspective. The investment that we made in terms of democratizing the talent hiring, you know, in terms of the national qualifier test, etc., meant that you know we have the wherewithal to hire hundred thousand freshers last year, right? While we said that we'll hire forty thousand, and the demand shot up, and the attrition came in, then we had to hire more people. We had the database to reach out to people and bring them on board, train them, and make them relevant. How much uh, has uh, employee cost, however, gone up and wage pressure going forward? Do you see that continuing, uh, you know, with attrition still in its higher teens? No, I think um, it's, um, uh, you know, typically in our industry, about uh, 7 to 8% year on year uh, wage increase is uh, normal. And, um, and that's something that we have all been always been used to. Sure. But in the current situation, there are packets where we have to make some tactical interventions to retain the key people that we need. And uh, if you need to hire some people uh, from the market, then you know they come at a much higher cost. Um, likewise, now if you really look at in that context, some of the subcontractor cost that we have, you know, uh, um, that's also gone up for us, right? But overall, you know, the business mix and the talent mix that you have is very crucial. So what we need to do is we need to put the uh, the right experienced set of people and the right technology skills with the level of experience, some freshers, some in the experienced people, some architects in which, you know, that we are able to execute it with the right cost structures and the corresponding value proposition that we can give to the customers, which is what we are doing. And given our large base, close to about 595,000 people that we have, we are able to do that uh, fairly well. Just one question on work from home, because, uh, you know, you've had 90% working from home all this while. Now that uh, the tide is changing, how are you implementing the transition? Uh, how are employees reacting to it? How is it affecting productivity in the new post-pandemic scenario? Yeah. No, I think... Uh, uh, we have started to bring people back to offices. We are encouraging them to come and uh, we are giving them the flexibility to begin with. Uh, but then we are keen that people come back to office and then start to collaborate well and so on, so on. We had uh, our first uh, customer summit in uh, Lisbon about three weeks ago. Uh, almost about 250 plus clients uh, came and participated with us. One of the first physical event that we have been we hosted in about two to two and a half years. The experience is great. People like it. Clients like it. 
And we also started to get clients. You know, when last week we had three client visits in Bangalore for coming our facilities in Bangalore. And almost in all our facilities, clients have started to come, which meant that, look, our people have started to come as well. And uh, what I saw in the initial set of people is that uh, they are bubbling with energy. And they saw in their campus, and then um, they will interact with people. The energy levels are great. So I think, you know, more and more people will come, uh, come back to offices. And uh, we will always um, calibrate it with the employee safety in mind. Uh, you know, that's always we have prioritized it. But we are encouraging our, uh, our associates to come back to office uh, with certain amount of flexibility that they can uh, uh, yeah, leverage. Yeah. Flexibility will be the key going forward. Ganpati, thank you for your time. A great quarter. Congratulations once again. And it's really, uh, uh, you know, with, with giants like TCS continuing to outperform and deliver uh, that, uh, you know, continue to inspire and lead the way for the market. So uh, great news. And of course, for our viewers watching, remember quite a big fat dividend as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, continuing to deliver for investors as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Abba. Appreciate your time. Bye-bye. Okay.